Previet Druzy, Wes O'Donnell here, veteran of the Army Infantry and the Air Force. And today we're talking about Ukraine's dragon drones spitting fire on Russian invaders. But first, if you enjoy short, digestible analysis on the Ukraine war, or military technology in general, it would be cool if you could subscribe. No pressure. Just saying. Think about it. Okay, so I got a call yesterday from an old battle buddy I served with in the 101st Airborne. Now, most of us are living the comfy life of a veteran in the United States, albeit with some back and knee pain. Trust me, um, this uh, heating pad is your best friend. My uh, millennial veterans and my Gen X veterans watching uh, know what I'm talking about. So Johnny says to me, hey Wes, have you seen these dragon drones Ukraine has been using against the orcs? And I had. Like many veterans of the global war on terror, we have been watching Ukraine's defense with a dual sense of unbridled support and FOMO, fear of missing out and a longing to be there alongside our Ukrainian comrades. Out of the members of my squad, I'm the only one who left the Army to serve in the Air Force and then pursue a formal education in global security and law, so my analysis can go a little deeper, but deep down there's still a tendency to look at things from the grunt view at ground level. Ukraine's fire-breathing drones are the latest infantryman's nightmare made manifest by the ingenuity of Ukrainian soldiers what I lovingly call the MacGyver Army. Also, can we pause and appreciate the Ukrainian unit who shared this video is called the Korn Group, named after the Blood God from Games Workshop's Warhammer 40K. Uh, just saying that nerds rule. On this day, my buddy was calling to get my take on these new drones, wondering how we might deal with them if they were being used against us. In the Desert Wars, we were like Zeus's chosen demigods. We never had to worry about looking up. That was the uh, domain of the Zoomies in the Air Force. We had no idea how the machines worked. All we knew was that we were protected by divine air superiority. But in Ukraine, a different reality exists. The sky is contested. What would it be like to be a Russian infantryman in that environment? I imagine it's more like Tartarus than Mount Olympus. So let's take a closer look at Ukraine's new Dragon drones and how terrifying they might be to the unfortunate Russian contract soldier caught in their crosshairs. Here's what we know about Ukraine's fire-breathing drones. Last week, Ukraine's defense ministry posted videos on X showing Ukrainian drone raining down what appeared to be fire, but was molten metal, on forested positions presumed to be hiding Russian units. This imagery evoked memories of HBO's Game of Thrones dragons. When I first saw it, I did a double take. Now that's something you don't see every day. A slow moving consumer drone spitting fire down into the landscape below. These drones are actually carrying a thermite grenade. Now thermite is a mixture made from metal powder, most often aluminum and powdered iron oxide or rust. It's not explosive per se, but generates heat at the extreme temperatures of 2200 degrees Celsius. That's about 4000 degrees Fahrenheit. Kind of like fire from a real dragon. Thermite is a military tool we use to burn through metal. In our case as infantrymen, it was rarely used but could have been made available if needed for close combat anti-tank operations, sabotage, destroying equipment we didn't want to fall into enemy hands, or destroying a cache of weapons. Drop a thermite grenade onto the roof of a Russian tank, and it will, eventually, burn its way straight through. Steel will start to liquefy between 1,300 and 1,500 degrees Celsius. It's also hot enough to burn underwater, which makes it useful for those squids in the Navy. Where, where are my Navy folks at? Sound off in the comments, Navy. If used on humans, let's say Russians, who might be hiding in a tree line, the heat would be intense. There would also be respiratory issues and some severe psychological trauma. 
Like many American infantrymen, we had the Geneva Convention's rules of war hammered into our heads from day one. So for many of us, our first thought upon seeing these Dragon Drones was, is this legal? Remember, Ukraine maintains the moral high ground. They were invaded. They are defending their home. They don't murder innocent civilians. So I'm always sensitive to something that could be used by Russia as a propaganda victory. Fortunately, using thermite against Russian troops does not violate any international rules or guidelines on wartime conduct. However, it is against international law to use incendiary weapons on civilians. It's also illegal to use them on military targets inside populated areas or in forested areas unless the green cover is believed to be hiding military troops. And so far, that's exactly how Ukraine is using them, to burn away forested areas to reveal the Russian troops hiding beneath the foliage. The same cannot be said for Russia, who used thermite in March of 2023 against civilian targets in the Ukrainian town of Volodar. In the video shared by Ukraine's defense ministry, you'll notice the drones flying extremely low, just above the treetops. This is by necessity. The thermite grenade has no effective range. Zero. So the effect of fire breathing is really just gravity pulling down the metal powder. In one video I saw, the Dragon Drone lit the entire tree line ablaze. This could be incredibly useful for Ukrainian spotting and targeting for subsequent artillery strikes or to flush Russian infantry into the open. The thermite grenades themselves could have been supplied by the U.S. as part of military aid and Ukraine likely received at least some from the Pentagon. Indeed, the U.S. military just restarted M14 thermite grenade production after a nine-year hiatus at Pine Bluff Arsenal in Arkansas. However, the thermite compound itself can be purchased from Amazon and numerous private sellers. It goes for about $30 uh, for eight ounces in the U.S. And it's not illegal to make thermite in the U.S., although transporting the stuff is another matter completely. According to recent reporting by Defense News, some of the Dragon drones are thought to be developed by a private Ukrainian defense company called Steel Hornets. The company specializes in attaching unique weapon systems to consumer drones. Why didn't my guidance counselor give me that career option? Still, the question remains, what would we as American infantrymen have done if, if faced with a Dragon Drone coming at us? Well, assuming we weren't wearing SPF 2000 sunblock, I imagine good order and discipline might have broken down as we sprinted away from the thermite raining down on us as quickly as we could. The alternative would have been a grisly death as our bodies and bones are melted down into a charred sludge. But imagine the psychological impact on the Russian infantrymen. You believe yourself to be well hidden from the Ukrainians under the tree canopy. So you sit down to eat your canned sausages and moldy fruit. Suddenly, you see a curtain of fire moving towards you at 50 kilometers per hour, far faster than you can run. What's worse, it's setting everything on fire. Even from 30 meters away, you can feel its intense heat. The only place to run is out in the open, where... Ukrainian FPV drones are waiting to greet you. And that's what the invaders are facing at this very moment. I almost feel sorry for the poor buggers. Almost. I just hope Ukrainian drone operators are saying Trikaris! as they fly. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraini.